Oh, hello everyone. Welcome again for another webinar of, of the Talking with Titan series. Um, just a brief introduction for those who just joined us for the first time. This is a webinar series brought uh, in conjunction uh, ANN, Aquaculture Nutritionist Networks, uh, together with in collaboration with us, AIC, the Aquaculture Innovation Center based in Singapore. So uh, my name is Fanny Asmaru. I'm the aquaculture nutritionist at AIC. And later uh, we'll have brief introductions from our panelists, Dr. Kabir and Dr. Albert Taken. Uh, so about AIC, for those who don't know, we are a consortium member of 11, consortium model of 11 members of the Institute of High Learning in Singapore, plus the research institutes. So we have a target to, to achieve the 30 by 30 uh, designed by the government, which is producing 30% of our nutrition, nutritional needs by 2030. And then our uh, mission is to reach out to local and regional uh, aquaculture industry players. So we have this uh, collaboration with ANN, which is a nonprofit organization headed by Dr. Kabir and Albert. Um, and so we bring several, so it's called Talking with Titans. So we bring Titans from the industry. Uh, to promote or to foster a forum for discussion. And today we have Dr. Man, uh, Manoj uh, from India. He will share some of his uh, experience with uh, Monodon. So, but before we go into his presentation, I would ask a, lead, uh, a short introduction from Kabir and Albert. Talk about yourselves and about ANN and why we are here. Okay, uh, I think Albert can uh, start, right, as uh, my guru, right? <laughs> no, not really. Um, we are very honored today to actually have uh, Dr. Manoj with us. Uh, one of the things about um, uh, our, our meeting with Titans is that we get representatives from the, from the feed industry and or the the farming industry. And really we want it to be as, as hands-on, as practical as possible. Um, and so really with with our network, we try and um, we try and capture people from all parts of the sector, people within the feed mill, people uh, giving the feed on farms, um, economists, biologists as well. And the, the more, the better, but the focus always is is on um, practical aspects of of feed development and also of farming. At the end of the day, we are here to serve the farmer. If the farmer fails, we sell no feed. And so it's really important that we always focus um, our attention on the needs of the farmer. So again, I'm very happy that uh, you know to have such an uh, a famous speaker as Dr. Menage with us. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Like, if I may, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manoj, to accept the invitation. Right, we are very grateful for accepting the invitation. Uh, about ANN, we started ANN about uh, ten years ago, more than a little bit more, uh, six, I think ten and a half years ago, uh, and we started this seminar during the COVID peak of COVID, right? when people were craving for information but could not get the information. There was no seminar, no physical seminar, no conferences, and uh, discussing with Albert that we can start something uh, which people are craving for, information. we can provide information useful, information useful for the bottom line people, right, who are on the field, who are working on the ground. And that's how we started the event. And since then, this is our 13th session. I guess since June last year, and uh, we our membership grew to 5,700 worldwide from over 110 countries. Uh, the membership aquaculture nutrients network and from all uh, spectrum of our industry. So I would like to uh, thank again Dr. Manoj and also uh, uh, 
AIC team to support and to uh, agree with our vision that we need to do something for the industry, for the bottom line people of the industry, so the industry can survive and flourish. So uh, that's all, Fanny. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thanks, Albert and Kabir. So before we go into Dr. Manor's presentation, I'll just give a short introduction who he is. Dr. Manor Sharma, he's a pioneer in shrimp farming. He in India, he has 25 years experience in planning and execution of shrimp farms. He has experience in managing satellite conception of shrimp farming, uh, formation of shrimp farm cooperatives and management, and also planning and managing of cluster shrimp farming. And he's current. He has hold many positions, but currently he's the director of Mayanka Aquaculture, PVT Limited, Private Limited. So uh, I'll ask Dr. Manoj to also introduce himself. Uh, the format of this uh, uh, webinar is a 30 to 40 minutes presentation, followed by another 40 minutes plus of discussion, and people can ask questions, type in the conversation. There's a, a balloon on the top where you can type in your questions and then we will ask during the discussion. So please, Dr. Manoj. Thank you. Thank you, Team ANN and uh, Dr. Uh, Albert Taikon, Dr. Kabir, uh, dear Fanny. Thank you so much for giving me this chance to come and uh, speak uh, as a farmer, uh, my, my perspective towards the farming. And it was great listening from Dr. Kabir, what is the, the motive behind uh, ANN. And I, I fully agree with Dr. Albert Taikon that, you know, uh, farmer uh, and the production primary producer is the base of the entire uh, fundamental of our industry and uh, his interest uh, should be protected. So this is a great platform that where I can share my views. Uh, uh, and um, uh, thank you, Kabir, for reaching me out uh, uh, for this uh, very hot and burning topic in India right now. So uh, let's not uh, uh, waste further time because I, I, am, I know I'll take little time during the talk. So let's share the screen and. Uh... OK, so sure. funny, you can tell me whenever but there is some obstacle so I can continue. So today uh, uh, my topic is uh, completely from the farmer side, uh, farmer's perspective uh, that uh, bringing back the black tiger uh, monodon in India. This is the recent trend which is gaining very uh, uh, like a lot of interest among the farmers. So why it has been demand and how the things are going happening in India. So let's uh, go through my presentation, which is actually a complete insight as a farmer uh, perspective, because I myself am very proud to say that I'm a farmer and plus 28 years uh, I'm doing shim farming in Gujarat, which is on the west coast of India. Whether it's a monodon or a rise of Vanami, and again, there is an interest of monodon getting back. So why this is happening and how farmers can really get the insight of that. So let's go into the presentation. So as, as the world knows that in India has been one of the top uh, shrimp producer, but recently taken over by Ecuador. So if you see the fact file of India uh, that, you know, monodon era was 1985 to 2009. And then came the uh, exotic species Penis Venama in 2009. And uh, you could see that after that, uh, there was a Venami tsunami in India. Uh, the shrimp production from 68,000 tons has gone up to 7 lakh, 8 lakh, 800,000 tons. So if you see the area of shrimp farming, uh, the hectare age is close to 150,000 hectares of shrimp farming. And the national average of shrimp production per unit area is close to 5,000 uh, kg, that is 5 ton. But here I'd like to say the difference between India and uh, especially the Ecuador, which are two major shrimp producing nations in the world right now. I think if I'm not wrong, uh, India and Ecuador itself is producing 30-35% of the entire world. But Ecuador, you could see the, the, the farms uh, are very big, uh, minimum 500 hectare to 12,000 hectare. But in India, uh, if you divide uh, this 150,000 hectares, the unit holding per farmer is less than 5 hectare. And that that's makes 
lot of things uh, uh, too difficult to operate, to manage, to maintain. And uh, another difficult thing in India is that our 99%, uh, you can say, but this year I would say 90%. 90% uh, of our shims are completely depend upon the export market, uh, especially USA and China. And we have uh, up to up to uh, 2020, we say we, there was a very negligible domestic market. But I don't know whether I should say thanks to COVID or not, but because of the COVID and the lockdown, I think uh, the uh, the local consumption of shrimp has really, really picked up. So uh, the world should know that uh, why Black Tiger has gone from uh, India, because India was synonymous with the name Black Tiger and uh, and uh, out and out from uh, 1985 to 2010, India was only producing Black Tiger and uh, to a tune of like 60 to 70,000 ton on an average. But I think Black Tiger has mainly gone because of uh, the very poor quality of the seeds, because there was no um, uh, breeding program, uh, indigenous breeding program. There was a lot of uh, disease occurrence and new diseases and emerging diseases. So major problem was white spot, you know, whenever there was a peak of monsoon and uh, the good growth for Mononon and, and the industry could rattle with uh, white spot. So I think uh, I will... Uh, uh, point only one thing that why black tiger has gone from the country is majorly the failures of the shim farmers because of the lack of the good quality seed and then in uh, there was a huge uh, demand from the industry because you could see during the monodon era the industry was almost on a halt and uh, everything was stagnant not much growing because of the repeated failures to, from the farm so there was this hue and cry from the farmers community and industries looking into the good uh, aspect of uh, Venami introduction in Thailand and Southeast Asian countries. And the lead attraction of Venami was definitely uh, good quality brood stock, uh, specific pathogen free uh, seeds. But the biggest attraction to the farmer was like uh, faster growth and we can produce more or almost double or triple than the monodon. That was the biggest attraction for the farmers and and, and it, it proved uh, true also in one sense because in 2010 when it was launched you could see that every successive year india has added almost like 100,000 tons of shrimp production so why the venami farming is not the same as before this 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 uh, graph and you could clearly clearly see that from 2010 when venami was introduction our india shrimp production was less than 100,000 tons, but you could see 2011, 12, 13, all successive nine years, India has consistently grown, uh, almost like adding on 100,000 ton of shrimp production every year. But as a farmer, uh, what I could see, you know, thanks to shrimp farming that, you know, and to the world, those who have invited me to give my expert comments and expert view on various forums, that has enabled me also to learn what's happening in the world. So I could relate that, you know, wherever Venami was introduced uh, outside the Pacific countries, especially uh, we, whether you say Vietnam, you say Indonesia, you say Thailand, China, all these countries have suffered after six, seven years. So India was uh, not um, geared up to understand that. And, and, and this is what really is happening now. Since 2017, 18, yeah, as a farmer, I could see there was a stagnancy in production and the, the production was declining not because of, uh, again, uh, the capacity of the industry, but because, again, the failures at the farming. End. And you could see in 2019-20, there was a dip of 20% in India, shrimp production, especially Vanami. And, and, and as I said, there were very big issues as diseases, not about the industry or the infrastructure to handle. Because I could see a uh, lot of monodon farms, 100% monodon farms were converted to Vanami. And uh, they are uh, actually Indian shrimp farming. Some farms in Andhra Pradesh are very older, like 20, 30 years or 35 years old. So the carrying capacity uh, of the areas were compromised because of repeated two crops or three crops of Vename in a year. And then uh, the negative carrying capacity has really invited the diseases. And especially, again, I will say, uh, white spot was 50-60% damage are followed by the running mortality, white gut, white visa, slow growth and uh, the seed quality issues again. 
so this is what i see that you know uh, uh, during vanami what last few years we have been observing that you know what is the perfect recipe for a disease you know high stocking density fun fundamentals and high salinities and high organic load uh high water quality uh, high high water temperature especially because in our part of country west coast where the water temperature in summer exceeds our 32 33 degree and the aerial temperature even touches to 40 to 45 degree that becomes really really very sensitive for vanami and this has become a perfect recipe for the disease to develop and also uh, as a farmer and and a, and a key player in my area we could see last 30 years i have been developing from four ponds to almost like 4000 pond in the same creek you could see this is what has happened after the introduction of vanami you could see the same creek where where the carrying capacity of the entire creek uh, could have been compromised so for me and the for for the people today who are uh, listening to me it is very very important for each and everybody is to understand the pond carrying capacity versus the the production in that particular area because it is it is it is very very uh, important to uh, to assess the negative carrying capacity which is been compromised because of the dumping of the organic load into the uh, the present creek so for for me it is very important not to assess the pond carrying capacity but also to assess the creek uh, and the the uh, area carrying capacity to to perform well and and i i could relate you know uh, in, in india uh, Uh, now in uh, earlier in monodon there was only a white spot and the seed quality was a big issue but in vanami uh, after 6 7 years we have observed there has been a lot of uh, organic load especially uh, uh, i would like to mention that uh, the sludge removing technique has really uh, helped the shim farmers initially but longer run removing the sludge and dumping into the same source of water so the shim toilet i don't know whether but as a farmer i could see initially the concept helped but later on uh, the successive removal of uh, uh, the sludge and dumping into the same uh, creek and not not treating it properly i think farmers have misused that tool and even uh, i'm sorry to say that even industry the technical experts especially uh, the feed companies has failed to really uh, execute the right direction of uh, sludge removing technique and it has really really damaged the industry uh, now you can see in summer uh, because of high temperature we have white gird and white feces in uh, our area and then the moment the monsoon starts there is a white spot so that's what i am saying there is a white wash in vanami and of late in last 2 3 years and especially during the lockdown uh, my god uh, the cost of feed has really really gone up by 26 27% because of the import restrictions because of the logistic because of the labor shortage because of the fish mill shortage because of the uh, other agriculture uh, by products like soya bean and all all were really really increased and today you could see the uh, shrimp industry or the the poultry or any feed industry has has really uh, difficult situation uh, affecting uh, the production uh, uh, efficiency the cost of production has really really increased and whereas uh, even uh, the the cost of uh, uh, refrigerated or uh, the international uh, shipping freights has gone almost like four time five time and, and all all has squeezed down to the farmers so farmers are really after producing also they have lost the money because of the uh, increase in the cost so let me because i belong to gujarat uh, which is the west coast uh, of india and uh, compared to andhra pradesh we hardly produced uh, 7 to 8% but uh, it is the growth from last 15 years was very phenomenal and gujarat was one of the most leading state in in terms of production and quality per unit area so I, again i said 1995 to 2009 was the vanami uh, monodon era and when vanami came 2010 to 2020 our area has phenomenally done very good and especially i was one of the the key advisor to the entire uh, farmers association and we always believe in positive carrying capacity so rather than going for two crop uh, my concept of uh, do, do vanami the farming way like we were out and out monodon farmers so we handle vanami like the monodon way with low stock intensity and growing to the size of 30 to 45 50 grams of uh, vanami it has really helped my farmers to make huge money 
But in 2019, again, I think the greed is the biggest spoiler. I think the greed is the bigger disease than even the white spot. So it is very difficult to control when you are doing well. So farmers that really experimented high with stocking density and overproduction, and then we could see that um, effect from 2019 that our 85 percent pond uh, were affected with WFD, white fecal diseases, EHP, and running mortalities, and and farmers were really really in a big shock. And then came in, in uh, 2020 March uh, the sudden lockdown uh, imposed uh, for the uh, benefit of the community to stop the uh, COVID. But that has also uh, given the complete halt to the scheduled flights. And since our uh, entire infrastructure, hatcheries and feed meals are in east coast of India, and from there in our area is almost like uh, by road is 2,000 kilometers is impossible to travel. So all the, uh, uh, our areas, uh, we have gone almost like uh, very less with the production. And uh, really farmers are lost because they need to give uh, continuous salaries to the, their, their workers. And, and then you could see it has, everything has affected. So here is the, a very good comparison I'm giving. Uh, the cost of production is very important because uh, for, for you, the international and the world market, you see India as one, but uh, but if you see, 70% uh, of the shrimp in India is produced in Andhra Pradesh and all the infrastructures, the 500 hatcheries plus 35 feed meals and everything is in uh, Andhra Pradesh. But you could see uh, uh, the cost of in Andhra Pradesh is right side on the green side. For pond preparation to seed, feed, all the component I have given, they come close to 267 in Indian rupees, which is hardly 3.5 US dollar per kg. But if you compare Andhra Pradesh uh, cost of cost efficiency in stream production versus the rest of India, you will find a surprising factor of almost a one dollar jump. So Indian rupees, you could see 317. Uh, and this price increase is only mostly because of the differences in the, the, the power uh, supply tariff and also the cost of transportation and especially uh, the 30, 35 percent extra cost uh, for the transportation of the post larvae. So this is really affecting uh, the other states in the maintaining the cost efficiency ratio. So if you, if you see Andhra Pradesh is producing shrimp close to $3.5, so rest of India is uh, producing close to $4.2. And, and this is for the uh, greater understanding. I have split from 70 count to 20 count and trying to give a proper reasoning that why uh, a smaller count is not profitable uh, to the, the, the people who are producing outside uh, the Andhra Pradesh, I mean to say the rest of India. If you see 70, 70 count, uh, so in the red you could see the return on investment is hardly 50 to 20 percent. And when there is a slight one pound damage, the entire uh, profitability of the farmers goes. But as you could see, as the 60 count, 50 count, uh, 30 count, you could see from 40 counts, the, the profit of margin starts uh, coming to the farmer. But for me, the farmers, those who always produced about 30 count and even 50 grammars, we, we used to make 127% uh, profit uh, on uh, price realization by only doing one successful crop. So this is, this is what I already mentioned, that what Andhra Pradesh uh, is on, on the driving uh, seat uh, compared to the cost efficiency. Other states cannot afford to do that. So the farmers in Andhra Pradesh can even produce 100 or 80 count and still survive. But the rest of India, minimum, they need to produce 20, 25 gram shrimps to survive. And as uh, Dr. Albert says, uh, uh, the, the successful mantra, what you say, the, the, the principle is that the farmer survives, the whole industry survives. This is very, very important because exports depend on farmer, the hatchery depend upon farmer, the uh, health product depend upon the farmer, the feed companies, everybody. They only earn when the farmers earn. So this is very, very important for uh, us to understand the importance of the primary producers in any system. So uh, as the Venami, there was no much uh, profits in the last uh, two, three years, in especially uh, the, the rest of India states. So then again, there was a demand uh, for growing the, the bigger sizes. And then they... And the, the, especially the SPF uh, monodon program came into India. But here I like to, as a farmer said, I like to give you a chart and a comparison 
between SPF Monodon, especially because Mona is already there in Gujarat, in our area, with the conventional wild Monodon. If you see the average daily growth, uh, what we have recorded, this crop is almost close to half a gram uh, uh, growth. And uh, you could see with conventional, it is only 0.2 uh, ADG. And uh, in DOC, 120 days to 130 days, uh, Moana has grown to 50 grams, which is almost like 20 count per kilo. Whereas the conventional uh, seeds will take at least 200 days to grow that size. So what should be the next move to the farmers? If, for example, me as a farmer, when I was not doing any good in Vanami and my farms are, are not even able to, with good technique and technicality, not able to cross even 20 gram, 50 count. So what was an alternative for me to, to try new species or, or again experiment uh, bringing back the Mona because we have an SPF Mona. So, but there was so much doubts in the mind of, uh, especially me as a farmer, whether, uh, uh, Monodon will be success in Venami ponds, so whether uh, the same diseases which has been rattled by white, white pickle disease, EHP, will not affect the SPF Monodon. Will there be a good growth uh, like what it has been suggested? Will there be enough market? Because uh, earlier India was having a name of black tiger uh, producing country like Bangladesh, but that we have completely lost in last 10 years. So the, each and every uh, niche has been taken by Venami. And will there be a better price? So there was some doubts in the farmer's mind. And uh, things to be kept in mind before uh, what, what we did to, uh, before starting the monodon. Uh, very close watch on the broodstock was very important because what quality of broodstocks are coming to Gujarat and uh, whether the quality of seed uh, produced is up to the mark, whether the uh, uh, existing EHP will also affect monodon. And all this was a very... Uh, close tight protocol was maintained and uh, even for the exporters uh, that uh, we, we also there was a cross examination with exporters because they themselves were in a dilemma whether they will be getting the orders for black tiger mononon so as you know when was dominated from 5 gram to 50 gram and um, and you could see that you know Viet, uh, vietnam bangladesh is already producing 60000 ton followed by uh, 20,000 ton by Vietnam and the, if you see the uh, out of 4.5 uh, million ton market in the world, Monodon uh, space is not more than uh, 150,000 tons. So, so and whether uh, the Monodon seeds quality or whether we can give a continuous supply because Monodon is mostly in one crop per wonder. So that were all the questions. And uh, and Mona situated, you know, definitely the Brewstock company because now in India, there's a big debate is going on uh, to import uh, the Brewstocks from the non stream farming nations because uh, everybody is in doubt to uh, uh, permit uh, permission to bring from the stream farming nations from Thailand and Vietnam because there is a great degree of risk to allow them. So this was the situation. So Mona and Uni, Uni Alma, uh, they are the two players given permission from the non-stream farming nations. And, and if you see the comparison of broodstock uh, from uh, stream farming nations and broodstock from the wild. So I have given a critical comparison, so which is likely to be more uh, risky. So very good quality, the broodstock actually now the from Thailand, the CP broodstocks and other uh, we took, they are really, really performing good. Uh, and uh, when we compare India, so there is a chance that, you know, if you don't allow stocks from the same farming nations, then there will be uh, a spurious seed production because there is a huge demand and it will be very difficult for any agency, any government to control such a 60, 70,000 numbers of farmers and 500 hatcheries. So my my take is that stock from same farming countries still still manageable because, because we have a very high tech uh, quarantine and we can control each and every disease at the quarantine. But giving permission from uh, the... Uh, the wild caught will be a very big disaster and it will be very suicidal for the industry because non-SPF uh, monodon and SPF manami cannot survive together. So both uh, seed has to be uh, SPF and SPR. So, uh, but a lot of questions are also again asking in India then why uh, China is importing from farming nations, other countries are importing farming nations. So why India should be restrained? Because if you see... 70% of brew stock uh, right presently coming uh, is uh, China is importing followed by Thailand, Malaysia 
and India is still in question mark whether they will permit from Shim warming nation or not. So this is the practical results from my own farm. And so I'm giving you this, all pictures are from my farm. So result of SPF monodon production 221 at, at uh, if you see that close to 500 million seed has been produced through Moana and Aqualma together. So I have taken a 70% survival because my farm's practices were one of the best. So I didn't get more than 70%. So I'm taking it as a yardstick as 70% survival. And sweet production in India with uh, SPF uh, monodon is close to 12,500 ton approximately and 2% of total Vanami production. So 25% of this two uh, is like 3,000 ton close to, from Gujarat. And my, myself um, on my own farm this year, I have converted 80, 80 hectares uh, to monodon and produced close to 450 tons. So this is what uh, you could see the real picture of uh, like 18 count, 18 uh, pieces per kilo of my own farm. So here uh, my take home message is that definitely as Dr. Albert said, uh, farmers uh, are the biggest drivers of the industry. And uh, if they, they success, the industry success. And it is very clear and evident from the demand we, uh, which has been rising for monodon seed that farmers are failing in uh, Vanami and they are not able to make any profits. So now it is up to the industry and the industry stakeholders and the leaders to balance between the production and the market and, and gain from uh, monodon. This is, this is what uh, my take home message. And uh, thank you so much uh, for, for listening to me. And now I am open for the discussion. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. Very good presentation, very enlightening about Thank farming you. in India. Uh, while we wait for questions to come in, the quick Q&A session, uh, mm -hmm. just curious, what is the density you use? I, I to be honest, uh, I experimented from 10 piece, 15 piece, 20 piece, uh, because I, 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 I myself, because I have a, 120 pounds, so I could uh, uh, see that because I was in confusion whether uh, the same Vanami uh, negative carrying capacity pond should not affect the SPF monodon. But the uh, uh, all have uh, shown a phenomenal result, and especially I could see uh, they show a lot, lot of degree uh, resistance to EHP monodon. Mm. So EHP was not a problem. So I, I couldn't see running mortality. I couldn't see any other things. But yes, uh, once there is a current capacity, like there is some uh, lack of DO, then definitely some loose shell will start because the intermolting period, they really, really exceeds. So out and out, it was a very good show. And uh, compared to Vanami, uh, there was almost like, um, because I, I pay honest taxes to the government, so I can say on this forum, so per per kg we have earned more than six to seven dollars. Oh wow! Which was which was impossible to make money in. See, see for me as a farmer, it is very clear why to produce one thousand ton of vanami and hardly earn half a dollar. Okay. So rather produce three hundred, four hundred ton of monodon, at least make few dollars, so we survive. And and I I think that you know uh, if you have a production, the market dynamic change. But if you only listen to the market that there will be no acceptance, now there will be no uh, monodon, will, nobody will take. I think uh, that that will be a big misguidance to the farmers. I think so I, I have, uh, the change of sorry, taste is always the consumer like the change of taste. So, uh, Dr. Manoj, thank you for the presentation. I, I, I have a question, right? So uh, in case of the, the, the demise of monodon in the 90s, right? It was uh, like after three, four hours uh, of farming, we see the occurrence of diseases. Like, uh, do you think the same similar thing will happen if we uh, start massively farming monodon? And what could be the uh, options to not to have that kind of problems again with monodon in your mind? So, so that's that's a very very good question, Kabir. But uh, my suggestion. And uh, my uh, message to those who are listening to me, the farmer or the technicians, I think, I think India, my, my open message to my farmer community is that those who are doing good with Vanami should continue doing good with Vanami. 
and those who are failing to survive in manami the that that farmers and that area can be slowly slowly converted to monodon because world can slowly adjust with monodon but sudden production can backfire so my suggestion is that uh, those who are not doing good with vanami the farm especially in summer because vanami is a native monodon is native of india and it has a good tolerance i have i have seen even water temperature 35 monodon uh, loves to grow but vanami uh, collapses after 33 degree water temperature so uh, my take is very simple that uh, for me uh, whether you do vanami or monodon <coughs> never cross the carrying capacity of the system the moment for example covid is a big eye opener covid is something like you lose your immunity and then it will come and rattle you so so white spot virus or any virus in shrimp farming is something it is it is it is there in the environment it is there surrounding your pond but it waits uh, for the pond to lose the immunity with negative carrying capacity and the moment it will hit you nothing will happen so today lot of people you could see on twitter or on the instagram they say oh i have taken all the precautions oh my god how could i have got this covid no it is same thing in the farming you have taken all the biosecurity measures but still uh, the the white spot will come and strike you so i think i think uh, the whole thing revolves around uh, how you manage your protocol and how you assess and study your positive carrying capacity of the pond those people who are listening to me i will i will say with my 30 years of experience as a farmer aquaculture is not a country especially shrimp farming and aquaculture is not country specific nor area specific not even this thing aquaculture is pond specific what happens in one pond you cannot expect the same result in the adjoining pond so you need to study the pond specificity assess it correctly and then only you can move only you cannot say i have I, india has uh, 8 lakh ton production and all coming from these and that this, this is this is your international marketing perspective but if you see uh, as a farmer for me if i have a 100 hectare my 1 hectare unit is individual identity than 100 hectare i cannot say that all 100 hectare all the same seed all the same brood stock will perform the same so it is very very okay. important as a farmer that the world should understand the the uh, carrying capacity and in impacts on particular individual pond performance so can i can i ask a follow up question fanny mm, yeah sure so the follow up follow up question you said like uh, it, it is obvious that a major cost of production is the feed cost right followed mm-hmm. by labor and energy so as a farmer as a farmer what are the best ways to minimize the feed cost for you as a farmer what like what are the secrets tell us some secrets that you, that uh, you follow there every every farmer has his or her own secrets right so if you can share us with some of your secrets today to manage and to get the output efficiently right Uh, it would be nice Kabir, Kabir, i think i think um, uh, in, do, in in 2015 or 16 uh, you were you were uh, in the audience when i said uh, how many people actually knows uh, the 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 pellet per kg dr albert dr albert this is very very important question i'm raising yep. here because because this is an aquaculture nutritionist <clears throat> network when we talk right. about uh, managing the disease through through uh, uh, fortified feeds and uh, specialized feed functional feed but but actually right. industry is 30 year old for example for the grower feed uh, and others i could see you know the the, the 60% 70% of the feed is consumed when the pellet size size is above 5 mm so right. if a pellet size is 5 mm and how many pellets falls per gram because because if you see a, a a 10 gram or a 15 gram shrimp doesn't have a length more than 20 mm in the gut so if he if he if he eats from the hepatopancreas to his excreta excreting region then also the length is not more than 20 mm so hardly five or six pellet can go at a time Inside, so when right. you are throwing lakhs and lakhs uh, numbers of pellet in the pond and thinking thinking your fcr is stabilizing and all it doesn't work mm. so so in my own farm i have realized uh, two time feeding four time five feeding is better than two time 
six time is feeding is better than four time eight time yeah. feeding is better than six time and every time mm. i started increasing the feed numbers my feed waste has Bring drastically it. reduced and my fcrs yeah. were improving with the same feed with the same feed when somebody is claiming fcr is 1.5 with the same feed same nutritional fact i could achieve 1.2 because of effective feeding management and even yes. water color even the use of healthcare products probiotics everything has come uh, reduced so i think i think 55 60% of your intake uh, is your feed cost perfect. and if you judiciously right. manage your feed 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 and feeding protocol i think you will see a wonderful result for each and every farm i think lot of uh, feed companies should learn from this example lot of technicians should learn from this example it is not the quantity of feed you just dump in to the pond it is it is the timing of the feeding and it's the quantity of the feeding versus the size of the shrimp is very very <clears throat> important you see the classic example of ecuador in 2013 we presented on on feeding management in ecuador ecuador has changed from one feeding to two now two to four with the same pond system and dynamics now from 100000 ton they are producing almost 1 million ton because because now last 5 6 years data you take from ecuador you will be surprised the kind of feeding machine out of feeders have been sold in ecuador so ecuador the fate has been changed the farmers because of only effective feeding management so this is a classical example for everybody to learn 90% of disease comes from negative carrying capacity and the negative carrying capacity comes with 100% false feeding program so this is very very important for any nutrition to understand <clears throat> it is not the good food see how nutritious food but if you try to take the lunch and big dinner and breakfast together you are going to spoil your stomach Thank you, Kabir, for raising this good question. <laughs> I think this is, Albert can share some lights as well. I think if uh, if uh, Albert may want to uh, <clears throat> reducing the the ways to reduce FCR, right? It's a very good point, increasing the frequency of feeding. But we can no, can, mean, can we? But, but then labor cost is becoming higher, right? You have if you have to feed eight times with manual labor, it becomes really a big cost. So I'll no, no. I, 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 sorry to, <coughs> I don't, don't agree with you because, right. because see in India, I will tell you, I will tell you with, uh, with practical points. Today, labor cost in India per month, say, uh, close to uh, uh, four hundred dollars. Okay, yeah. and the feed cost is almost one point five dollar per kilo. But effective feeding program, if you deploy one labor to one pond. and you divide it per kg it will be much more efficient feeding uh, six times seven times eight times because you save almost 3 to 400 <coughs> kilo per ton yeah. And, yeah. and and that means means you are already saving 400 dollar oh, i i agree with ton. you i was going towards auto, auto automation if we can use automatic feeder probably we can minimize that cost as well but Sorry, i tell I'll, you uh, in india in india we have so much numbers of farmers if today also the automation will start it will take another 10 years okay so so we have to understand we we should never talk about few good farms we should talk about the the 90% of the farms whether they can yeah. adopt this kind of technique and technicality awesome thank you thank you yeah. no i could not agree more with uh with dr manoj um again one of the reasons why Ecuador has done so well also is because uh, many of the companies there mm. feed companies have started producing extruded feeds shorter feeds and like he said at the end of the day per kilo of feed how many pellets do you have you know in right. the past we've used conventional pelleting long pellets and and like he said at the end of the day it's it's about the quantity of 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 the number, number of pellets. pellets and the number of feeding right. opportunities a shrimp does not eat once or twice a day in its natural habitat if there's no predators it eats 24 hours a day and so obviously has as he's shown by splitting up the feed um he can get a much better result normally the for me the most important people on the farm are the people who are doing the feeding normally in most countries they yes. have 
the lowest salary, but they are the most important. With incentives, working as a team, you know, they can really get um, a very good result. In Ecuador, again, the problem is the ponds are four or ten hectares in size. And to manage that in a way with feeding is very difficult. And so that's why some farmers are now um, going for the use of automatic feeders. Um, but the question I wanted to ask Dr. Manoj, um, I think the first time I went um, to India, I was doing some work for Higashimaro India Limited with monodon feeds. I was wondering if he could comment on the quality of the monodon feeds um, in India compared to the Vanamai feeds and and how the feed companies have managed to to you know to switch over to the production of monodon feeds which requires a lot higher quality ingredients normally. Uh, Dr. Robert, uh, uh, this is a little bit, um, uh, if, if I'll say as a farmer, it will be a little, little um, uh, like... If, okay, sorry. No, get no, up, no, get no. up a little controversy, but uh, let me let me tell you very diplomatically. Uh, when <laughs> uh, the Banami came to India and Asia, each and every nutritionist said that Banami will grow with less protein. Yes. Even 18-20% Vanami is okay. It's like something, some, somebody said that it's like a cow. It will eat any protein and grow. But gradually it didn't work. Today, if you see, uh, I did one an experiment and just want to say because you asked this question. This time, two ponds, I have used Vanami feed in Monodon. And they have equally grown the same. And they equally yeah. grown the same because today we have an army, uh, the starters with 35% protein and the finishers with 28, 30% protein is the same, is the same. But, but what I have seen, monodon with natural carrying capacity system, with very healthy color, with, with healthy zooplanktons, the initial growth gets a lot of immunity from the natural food. Yep. Yep. And, and, and that is where the monodon will work. See, if you try to push monodon more than uh, 5 ton per hectare in earthen pond, it is going to, it's going to backfire you. Whereas yep. Vanami, because of the feeding habit and the column grazer or the column uh, swimmer, even if you maintain a very good oxygen level, even it will surprise you, it can produce 20 ton per hectare. But, but Vanami is, first of all, you have to understand, it's, it's not a suitable candidate for intensification. Yeah. Monodon is for a, a, a sustainable program. You can say that uh, Monodon is for uh, those farmers who doesn't have that, that uh, infrastructure. You can say Monodon per hectare should not be produced more than three ton or four ton. But, but today's, today's uh, scenario, the, the kind of profit uh, per kg Monodon can generate, which is equivalent to four times production of a Vanami. So yep. what is more realistic for a country like India? See, don't compare uh, that Singapore, if somebody produces in uh, uh, RIS, RIS. Ways, they can get $30 or $40 per <coughs> kilo. But can they get when there is a consistent quantity production? Because there is a demand. But in India, especially bioflock, RAS system will not work because the primary pond producers with one hectare, two hectares are happily producing $4. So, so $4 or to $8 will be on the cost of the high-tech systems. So where yeah. you are going to dump the shrimp? There is no special price in the market for a bioflock produced shrimp or a, or, a, or a intensified produced shrimp, or you, you are worried about the environment. See, these are only talk on the paper. But for example, my farms are BAP certified from last 10 years, but I have never heard that somebody gave me five cents more for my shrimp. So, so that is the, there should be a drive, there should be uh, some incentive from the, uh, the end consumer. When they talk about environment, they want uh, to talk about safety, all the programs should not be pushed on the shoulder of the farmer. Somebody mm -hmm. has to pay the premium. See, to saving the ecosystem, saving the environment is not only the purview of a farmer, it's the sure. entire industry should work for that. So, so this, this is what I, 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 I will say, that it's very, very important, uh, as you said, because you asked me the question about nutrition. I honestly, uh, Albert, uh, now Vanami and Monodon, there is not much difference. But still people, they are saying for Monodon, there should be 40% protein or 35% protein. But my farm right now with 10-piece, uh, 12-piece uh, Monodon, 
happily grown up to 26 27 uh, count of monodon with same analytic yep Uh, there are some, a few questions from the audience uh, touching different aspects of the farming. I'll go from the last one, which is on nutrition. So it's from Kumar Katya uh, asks if uh, so he thanks for your wonderful presentation. And also he asks, uh, can please shed some lights on the prospects of indoor shrimp monodon versus vaname farming in India? So the term optimum feeding frequency rate has always been reported with several other species. Assume applicable for monodon as well with respect to water temperature. See, I've gone through the, the term optimum feeding frequency rate has been reported with several other species as you may. See, well, my experience, uh, uh, Kumar, is that, you know, Vanami, uh, especially after 31, 32 degree water temperature, shows enormous feeding behavior, enormous feeding behavior. But that, that actually misleads the farmer. Farmer thinks that the chick has been consumed, so it, it, it increases 10%, 5%, 10% every day. But you need to also relate as a farmer what is your biomass, what is your average body weight versus the top feeding requirement. So, so you will be surprised me as a farmer in summer uh, last two years, my perform my farms have performed better than others because I stopped feeding them uh, from afternoon 12 to 5 p.m. in the evening because that time uh, the water temperatures are so high and the shrimps are showing a very uh, unusual erratic behavior of feeding. So I, I reversed the train. I started feeding them more in the night when the when the water temperature is cooling. Yeah. So the physiological difference I could notice <clears throat> in the growth. So so in summer when you are feeding a vanami shrimp. The gut retention is less than 45 minutes. It's just eating and excreting a half uh, digested feed, uh, giving you a lot of, lot of vibrio load into the pond. So same thing in monodon also. Monodon is also uh, the shrimp which is uh, cold-blooded. We, when we scientifically call it as a pyclothermic, it responds as per the water temperature. So, so shrimp farming has, doesn't have a same rule in summer, winter, or uh, even monsoon. So for shrimp farming, the environment is the pond water temperature. For him, the season is the pond water temperature. If you feed your program, adjust as per your given water temperature, I think then you will definitely, uh, you will minimize all other problems. That is what might take. And as, as far as this first question, whether indoor shrimp farming has a future in India, definitely uh, indoor shrimp farming can make a way, but depend your 8 lakh ton shrimp how much percentage of the shrimp coming from the, the, tra the traditional or the conventional farms? Because that price will dictate your price. If you are getting contracted farming and if you have a specialized rate or a con uh, end exporter for you who can give premium for your uh, control environment, I think then only go for it. Otherwise, if, if your shrimp and the conventional farm shrimp, they look the same, and so the market will give the same rate and same appeal to them. Uh, may I ask a related question to that, Dr. Manoj? Uh, it is like from your experience, right? You have feeding chart, feeding rate, a lot of, lot of things that to consider when we feed the animal based on the growth and biomass. So if you think like if we feed 100% of the rate or 90%, 80%, 70%, where we can get the best FCR? And would you prefer better FCR or better growth? That's another, like, what is your preference as a farmer? Like, see, see, there is, there again, I will tell you, um, uh, you asked a very, a very good question again. For me, FCR is more important than the feed price. For example, I will tell you, in, now in India, the average feed cost is $1.5. So, and, and the national average, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the national average uh, from last two, three years is 1.7 to 1.8 FCR. Wow. So if I have a $1.5 $1 feed into 1.8 time FCR, it's already $2.6 to me. Right. So, so a nutritionist like you, those who are working with ANN, I am throwing a direct offer to you. If you guys can give me uh, a, a better feed in $1.7, with 1.2 FCR, rather I will opt because that FCR is going to kill me and my pond. 
and my bond involvement. So today, the price factor should not be a worry to a farmer. If he has to pay 10% extra on the basic cost of feed, he should go with a promise, with an assurance from the feed miller that he will give him a better FCR. And again, I'm saying, it's not the feed or the nutrition or the, 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 uh, the raw material which is used will be help you in FCR. I think 80% uh, FCR uh, will help you if, with your effective and very, very uh, stringent uh, feed management system at the pond. Can I add to that? Yes, please. Um, no, I could not agree more. Um, you know, like I always say, I always talk about my five factors in terms <clears throat> of feed performance. The bottom line for the farmer is cost per kilo of production of shrimp. Yes. And that includes FCR and feed price. That's the bottom line. And the problem is every every year, because of the cost of the ingredients is going up and the cost of transportation is going up, you know, we have to, but it's the same problem for poultry or pigs or any sector. You know, we have to, the bottom line is, is cost per kilo of production. Um, but the other problem is, is, as he said, every pond is different. How many farmers actually measure the temperature and the oxygen level in their pond over 24, over 24 hours to see when is the best time to feed, when there is sufficient oxygen in the water, when the temperature is not too high, depending on the species. You know, it's something that's, that's super, super um, important. You know, um, you know, I always say that. Uh, I think uh, Albert video Albert video is freezed. My video is freezed. Yeah, I think uh, your your network. It's okay on this end. It's Kabir okay. who is frozen, but we can hear you. Anyway, no problem. Yeah. Um, but you know, the the important thing is is. You know when. Dr. Manoj, what normally I talk about, I always talk about my five factors. 20% is the formulation. 20% is the physical property of the feed. 20% is storage and transportation of the feed. 20% is how you feed the feed, feeding frequency, feeding level. And 20% is the farming system. Stock and density, water management, more important than feed is oxygen. And like you say, the problem with a with an earthen pond, you know that better than, than, than most people, is that every pond is different. And so the people feeding the feed are, are, you know, again, automatic feeders might be the future for people that have the money, but for the smaller farmer, uh, you know, we have to walk before we run. But the important message is that shrimp do not feed two times a day or three times a day. In their natural habitat, they feed continuously when there's food yes. available. I, I, I completely agree with you because the moment I have increased the feeding from six to eight manually, uh, I think my pro profitability and uh, has really increased. Plus, I could see there is a lot of lot of reduction uh, in in the uh, the pond management issues. I, I fully agree Fantastic. with you, Doctor Albert. Um, Pani, there is any further questions? Because uh, uh, yeah. Think, uh, Sorry, there are a few questions, so we yeah. go through them. So from Hamis Roshan, what is your take on an indige indigenous selective breeding program of monodon in India? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question, dear. But I think uh, last 10 years, we were very busy in making money in Vanami, so we didn't <laughs> even thought of that. So now, now the problem is rising, so definitely uh, it is on our priority cards and soon uh, we will start making uh, uh, some indigenous program for monodon because it is our native. And uh, I do agree that uh, we have failed to put our attention. Uh, I think when, when monodon was not doing well and we have introduced Vanami, that time itself we should have uh, started uh, some monodon indigenous breeding program. And uh, I would like to mention here uh, that our Indian government and especially MPDA they have run a very successful program uh, from last uh, 10 years on uh, Monodon. But unfortunately, uh, farmers were very busy making money in Vanami, so nobody gave them that um, uh, focus. So now I think uh, it will be a very helpful program. 
definitely it's on our card and since i am also uh, uh, some eminent members on some forums so i'm raising this point uh, every day good so we can expect some uh, monodam root stocks on from india yeah and i can yes, if i could just reply to that as well the last time i was in india i was lucky enough to go to the andaman islands um for an peter to look at their monodon broodstock uh program there because at, at the end of the day you know quality broodstock you can only get with quality feeds and so and biosecurity in feeds is is something that that's very important but the andamans and the expertise is is present in india you know in the end we need a we need to find that indian solution for an indian problem yes sorry but that was uh from a question from keith lau i think i don't know if you had any issues with disease in your farm but asks if um how did you deal with the disease occurring at your farm specifically white muscle disease and white spot disease so i lost my connection see see white muscle disease uh, i have observed there are uh, uh, several reasons to it uh, sometimes i could find uh, because of uh, uh oxygen problems in the morning there is a muscle cramping i have also seen uh, white muscles because of the lack of uh, proper uh, minerals in the pond especially in low saline water i have also seen white muscles in uh, uh, severe vibrio conditions when the green colonies are very high so i will not say now so some some diseases like white feces and white uh, this muscle cramping is a mix of uh, two three different vectors you know it's like environmental stress you can say the mineral deficiency you can say you can say the oxygen related problems and whenever the shrimps are in stress especially uh, they 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 have shown this white muscles and cramping especially during the molt mm. but what really eases them out is a, a very good proper water exchange and then maintaining calmag ratio properly calcium magnesium even potassium is a very limiting factor for them and increase of vitamin c during the molting period and maintaining a high level of oxygen and and i think i, I think after that uh, the the problems really really uh, goes away fast but it is not only related to one factor it is it is a multi multi factor problem even with white feces disease i have seen people talk about nutrition or people talk of lack of uh, uh, fish meal that's okay but i have seen uh, with bacterial white fecal i have seen i have seen with uh, ehp positive thing even i have seen uh, when the shrimps are with high uh, viral loads also they they are shown white fecal disease hmm. it's all about managing the pond if you yeah. maintain the pond with all uh, positive carrying capacity i think nothing will happen Yeah, so we always go back to your recipe for disease or not to have disease. Yeah, that's the that's the point. If you, if you are healthy, you will not be um, infected. The same mm -hmm. thing, your corn should be healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, question from Sunny. Uh, what is the cost per kg and the corresponding selling price in the local market? Uh, right now, Venami, the cost of production of Venami is close to four dollar, and uh, the selling price is four point five to four point six. So hardly point five dollar to point seven dollar is the profit in Venami, especially wow. in uh, in forty fifty counts in uh, my area. But uh, last crop uh, when I produced Venami uh, Monodon, Monodon I produced fifty uh, five uh, grams, so eighteen twenty count. So cost of production was almost like five dollar. But I got a price of eleven dollars and twelve dollars farm gate price, so it's a whopping uh, price. But but the production was very less, only three thousand ton uh, versus the fifty thousand ton Venami. So there was a huge demand. But uh, again, I want to appeal here. So don't go into this lucrative offers, and don't convert uh, fastly to monodon because the India is dependent upon ninety percent on export market and. there will be a very less acceptance in uh, because already bangladesh and vietnam and even now china are competing with monodon so i think indian farmers should go slowly those who are performing very good in venami i request them to continue go with venami mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
question from Celine An. Uh, any reason for the choice of pineos monodon instead of uh, macrobrachium rosenbergi? Oh, macrobrachium rosenbergi. Uh, uh, I'm a big uh, lover of that uh, scampi, but uh, scampi in a monodo in a monoculture has always shown uh, very negative results. So it's a very good uh, species uh, when you culture in reservoir and polyculture with. Uh, Indian major carps, but you can hardly produce 200, 300 kg per hectare. But like Vanami uh, or Monodon, uh, even myself, I tried in 1996-97, but uh, the cannibalism is very high and the the, the males with that blue clot, they really uh, dominate the whole stocks and uh, finally there is a huge um, killing and uh, the profitability will really, really come down. Uh, it is. It is never. See one thing. One thing I'd like to address to the forum. Farmers are very smart to understand the profitability in any species. So right now in India, people are with with monodon venami, not going for crab, not going for seaweed, not going for uh, marine fishes because they couldn't see a first-hand uh, profitability in that. But the moment somebody comes and demonstrate and there is a market acceptance, I think definitely even scampi mm -hmm. has a great future uh, because we have a lot of lot of resources and water resources area to grow freshwater prawn. But right now, it's not showing that profits. So it's not attracting to the farmers. And another question is, have you done any environment or climate control farming versus open pond farming? Not done uh, uh, control farming, but I have done uh, uh, three phase farming, which is completely controlled. Now I have invested uh, almost five hectare of a complete indoor uh, multi-phase system where I am growing when I'm 30, 35 days there. Uh, first, first from PL4 to <coughs> PL15, and then shifting from PL15 to PL30, 35, and then from there shifting it to the farm. Oh. So that has really reduced my uh, risk uh, risk among uh, doing the 120 days culture. So this is where uh, uh, the first phase, first two phases are environmentally controlled. And it is showing a very, very positive trend at my farms right now. I don't think we have more questions from the audience so far. Uh, Kabir and Albert would like to comment some more or Dr. Manoj. No, can I ask the question is, um, does and Peter provide guidelines to farmers in terms of uh, the densities that they should use for for vaname and monodon like they did before are they are they still no earlier earlier when i monodon Empire used to do all the technical guidelines but since 1990 uh, since 2005 i think coastal aquaculture authority has come into the picture and oh, okay. now coastal aquaculture authority has the complete uh, um, control over the aquaculture industry in India, especially uh, shrimp farming. And all the guidelines are very strictly monitored, rules and regulated. So we have a, a maximum cap of not doing more than 60 piece in uh, uh, one army. And as such, uh, uh, Monodon, we have not got any uh, uh, notification from the government that what maximum piece is permissible. But farmers are very smart to understand that, you know, anything about 20 piece is not uh, suitable yeah. for monodon. So you can say the the it's it's it's, it's a, a common understanding between each and every practitioner that monodon is not suitable after 20 piece stocking density. So they are sticking to that. When I mean, we don't have a cap more than 60 piece. So uh, when some somebody asked me a question about indoor farming or high tech system with 300, 400 pieces stocking density, which is not permissible in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question for you that uh, actually I started my aquaculture life with monotone in 1990s, or early 90s. Before the crash happened, I moved to freshwater uh, and then uh, tilapia, etc. Then moved to cold water species, right? So uh, at that time, in, in Thailand and some other countries, farmers were farming monotone freshwater, right? They started farming in uh, monotone some freshwater. What uh, would be the potential, like, to farm the monotone freshwater so that, like, more poor farmers or subsistence farmers 
can have a cash crop, can increase their income. Besides, like small scale farmers are talking. See, see, let let me be very honest and practical with you, Kabir. It's not about uh, uh, doing some experiments because see, today people have people are telling from last ten years that Venami can be done in zero PPT. But you show me a single farmer who has earned money uh, by doing zero PPT. So these are all, you know, these are all technical yeah. gimmicks, which uh, I don't uh, even want to discuss because farmers, uh, they get misguided. She okay. show me a single farmer by yeah. doing monodon or Venami in zero PPT has earned money. See, see, these are animals. They are very sturdy. They can also survive, but the survival yeah. will be 10%, 20%. That doesn't mean uh, that uh, you can uh, turn out to be a profitable crop. I think uh, I think below 10 PPT, whether Venami or Monodon, always have some issues when you want to grow them 20 gram or 30 gram because the molting, the mineral imbalances, so many yeah. other issues. So being a farmer and a responsible farmer, I don't want to you know talk about all this thing and misguide farmers because right now after COVID, each and every farmer has so less money in their pocket. And these poor people should not be misguided in a wrong direction. I mm. think I think those who are listening to me never ever come into this kind of talk that zero PPT, this is possible, zero PPT, that is possible. It is impossible. Or first try and go and see those who's claiming they are successful in zero PPT, at least what profit they have earned. Yeah. See, today, bioflock, fish farming and shrimp farming in India and YouTube is the biggest internet sensation. But you yes. show me every single farmer who has grown uh, Vanami in, in, in a circular tank and still sold profitable. Right, right. This is all, Kabir, sorry to say, but this is all misguiding, you know? It, it yeah. is great. Somebody somebody wants to sell technology, that's all. Yeah, yeah this I agree. Is great to pick the meats, right? So people sorry, are misguided. Sorry to, very, sorry to be very straight and blunt, but I am a farmer and, and a representative of farmer, and I always feel that farmer are the backbone of the whole world primary producer so they should survive they should not be misled or misguided that's why you are here sir to to dictate and tell, tell the uh, thank people you. Right? thank you for what thank you thank you for raising such a question which has right. a meaningful answer you know yeah. can i ask a question yes albert yeah um but remember i am a farmer and i also feel hungry because it's already in my <laughs> post lunch <time. laughs> Okay. No, yeah, well, finish, I, I, in India, because, we have because some... this is a virtual meet. Otherwise, Kabir could have given me a good lunch. I mean, I have <laughs> lunch. But anyway, right now, it's a virtual meet. Go to a lunch <laughs> at your at Jingala. At Jingala. Uh, you Jingala, know, you have to Jingala. talk about Jingala. Okay. You have to talk yes, about. Sorry, sorry, you said. No, no, no problem. I mean, in India, you have um, lots of different feed companies and some very good ones as well. I was wondering if you've had. Any experience using extruded feeds for monodon yet? Not yet. Right now, I have okay. not used extruded feed in monodon. But I, I think uh, uh, if, if very soon, if somebody will produce, I will definitely use it and try to give you. See, see. But honestly, extruded is mostly for slow sinking. So, so I don't think um, uh, monodon is very, very um, easy and a slow slow eater. So I think even a normal pelleted feed will not make any much difference to that. Okay. No, I think, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to depend on the density. And and like you said, I don't think, uh, Dr. Albert, uh, let, 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 let me be very honest uh, with you. With my 30 years of experience uh, and in future also, monodon is not a candidate for intensification. You cannot, you cannot grow 50 gram, 60 gram shrimps with uh, uh, 80 piece or 100 piece. That's all nonsense. You can hardly grow 10 gram, 12 gram, and there is no acceptance to that market. Yeah. What Venami can do with high stocking density, Monodon is not meant designed for that. It is like comparing apple and oranges, though, yeah, though yeah. both are shrimps. No, I, I, I don't agree. I, I don't even uh, suggest farmers to try Monodon in high stocking density. Not possible. No, I agree with see, you. I'm you not, can. I'm, I'm, you can. See, so companies like CP or very giant companies, they can do an experiment. You can produce 100 ton Monodon per hectare. But yeah. whether the same system can be adopted and effectively uh, sustained by farmers, that is a very big question. No, I agree, I agree with you. I mean, the, the only reason why I mentioned extruded feeds is that companies like Scretting, companies like Bioma in Ecuador, 
you know most you know most of the feeds that they produce for shrimp is is extruded feeds and these feeds work very well with with the auto feeders on on some of the farms where they're testing i know in in india you have groel you have some very very good companies very good nutritionists like victor suresh you know you know we have talent in india and um, but obviously at the end of the day it's going to depend on the density that the farmer uses and at low density like you say you find that that a 35 or 40 percent protein diet will give the same result as a 25 or 20 depending on the the natural productivity so um, but it was just the fact that there's a trend now for the increased use of of extruded feeds but again mainly introduced by the europeans feed companies which have this um you know experience more with with uh, cold water fish so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future uh, uh, um, funny i'd like to thank uh, jeffrey chu uh, someone who really liked my opinion you know because jeffrey very very few people like my straight and blunt opinion so thank no, you nice. for, for liking my opinion he said i'm <laughs> shooting from the hip you know he said, <laughs> thank you jeffrey <laughs> That's yes. wonderful. It's very wonderful. You know? We can open up ourselves and say what we think. We have to speak our mind, you know, about farming, about the future of aquaculture, future of shrimp farming. We just See, not Khalil, just Khalil, business. You know me. Money. You know me from last 15, 20 years now. I'm a farmer, right. and I'm not a diplomat or a bureaucrat or a politician or a socialite. Uh, or a green, green, green environmentalist. See, I'm a farmer, and uh, I know one thing: uh, we need to something. We need to survive, you know? and and then and every possibility the farmer will do to survive. It is, yeah. it is the, it is, it is important to stay in the game, you know. Otherwise, if you if you consider so many other things, you will be out of the show. I think yes. I think there there are many 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 points what each and everybody has to understand and consider it, but. At the end of the day, um, you need to survive. You need to survive. That's 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 the game. I agree. And if, if you think so guys, what I believe, so guys, sorry. thank you so much, uh, uh, Kabir, Albert. Yes. If there are no questions, Pani, it was lovely meeting you. Uh, uh, Doctor Albert, will will keep in touch, and um, I'd like to uh, um, be in touch with you and be part of your good network. So at least. Um, in each and every forum, we can have a good conversation, good talk, which can benefit the industry. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. Yeah, we, so yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we thank you, Dr. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for Pani. staying with us. You, I know you are very hungry, and Albert is very late. <laughs> no, and it's only for hungry. Kabir and me who is. We yeah. can stay longer. <laughs> thank you. Into the food. You take care. Of it. Good night. Yeah, thank you. But thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you, so everyone, thank for you. joining thank you, us. For right. the attendees, we will share the oh by Dr. <laughs> but we will share the slides for Dr. Manoj's presentation, and also the video will be on ANN YouTube channel in a few days time, maybe in one week's time. So uh, we will be sending the feedback form. So please, for those who want to receive the presentation, please. Uh, reply the feedback so we can also improve our webinar series. So thank you Albert again and Kabir for joining us today and see you for on the next uh, webinar series and happy new year to everyone. Thank you Fanny, thank okay, you Kabir. Thank you and thanks Ronsing always for the background work our assistance. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. take care.